adept at languages. I was in a class for three weeks before I learned that manganese is not actually a language. <laughs> but they did hand around to us a listing of particularly useful phrases that you want to use if you're in terrorist infested areas, such as Akbar Hali Hili Haftar Lotfan means thank you for showing me your marvelous gun. Fekhar Gabal Kardan David Pash means I'm delighted to accept your kind invitation to lie down on the floor with my arms above my head and my feet apart. Shamar Fekhla Tamama Gekal Fekh of course is I agree with everything you've ever said or ever thought in your life. My daughter was particularly taken by uh, working at the agency someday. You know, kids like to follow in uh, your parents' footsteps. When I was doing stand-up about 20 years ago and she was really young, she'd be running around saying, take my dolly, please. <laughs> but then one of the coolest things that you ever get to see is your child show up wearing an agency badge. She was an intern with us for a while. And my wife and I are just so proud to see her come home the first day and she's beaming and we uh, set the dinner table and my wife says, so, how was your first day? And she looks at Susan and says, I'm sorry, Mom, you're not cleared for that. <laughs> but Dad, you wouldn't believe what cool stuff we're doing. I'll tell you later on. So, something to consider. How many of you have seen the style invitational? It was in just today's paper. It's a comedy contest for folks. I was running something similar to that at the agency. And in this one, I asked people, okay, let's just set up a punchline system for you. So you finish the sentence. So two spies walk into a bar. A few of the things that they gave me was, well, I'm sorry, you're not cleared to see that punchline. <laughs> two spies walk into a bar. The Defense Intelligence Agency refused to coordinate on that punchline. <laughs> Number of you have worked with DIAC. <laughs> two spies walk into a bar. And surveillance lost them at that point, and we can only figure out what happened from there. <laughs> Two spies walk into a bar. Budget and finance questioned their accounting, saying paying for drinks while trying to blend in on the background was against regulations. <laughs> ah, you know where I'm coming from on that one, okay. Two spies walk into a bar. The employee assistance program scheduled an intervention. Drinking on the job is unacceptable. <laughs> The next one I asked them for was the classic joke question, why did the case officer cross the road? To see if surveillance would follow. <laughs> to ask surveillance how he was doing so far. Because it's hard to drive straight while well, you're always looking in your rear view mirror to see if surveillance is on you. To avoid that budget and finance officer who was chasing him down for his delinquent accounting. It's not just CIA who has internal jokes as well. You get a lot of jokes from other members of the intelligence community. One of my favorites was told me by a member of the Secret Service. They said that there was a competition between all of the canine crews at the various members of the intelligence community. So there were Secret Service dogs, the CIA dogs, and DEA showed up, uh, Drug Enforcement Administration, and of course, Jack Bowers, CTU showed up as well. And the dogs run off, and the DEA dog goes and finds a stash of cocaine and brings it on back. And everyone says, hey, that boy, that was great. You stopped the bad guys. And the CIA dog runs off and finds an explosive and de-wires uh, it and runs on back. Says, hey, boy, you saved everyone. And the Secret Service guys sent off their dog, and that dog just does fine, finds a stash of counterfeit bills, gets rid of that, comes on back. The CTU dog bites the other dogs and declares a press conference saying, hey, I did all this great stuff, what do you think? <laughs> Probably some of you have heard what the organization was, but I got a contract with that real organization, so. We also have uh, KGB guys out here. I've got uh, some jokes just for you guys. You know, when we were chasing after KGB folks and trying to find out what was going on in Russia, it was really hard to understand what it was that people were thinking 
because you can't do public opinion polls or anything uh, in Russia during that time. So instead, you'd look at what jokes people were telling. So some of my favorite jokes, Brezhnev was proud of a postage stamp that had been put uh, with his picture on it. And the KGB was wondering, well, gee, we've been opening all this mail, and we haven't seen any of this postage stamp showing up on it. What's going on? So they asked the usual suspects, and they found that 50% of those stamps were losing their glue because the users were licking its backside too enthusiastically. <laughs> and the other 50% of the people were spitting on the wrong side of the stamp. Well, that apparently is a problem. A Russian citizen was throwing anti-communist leaflets on Red Square in Moscow. He was arrested by the KGB and questioned on why the papers were all blank. And he said, well, it's obvious anyway. Why should I write it down? Cosmonaut Yuri Gargarin, the first guy up in space, leaves a note for his wife. Dear Natasha, I'm going to outer space. I'll be up in the sky. We'll be back on Monday. Yuri. After landing, he returns to his dasha, find a note from his wife. Dear Yuri, I'm waiting in the bread line. I have no idea when I'll be home. Archaeologists go to a major mummy dig in Egypt, and scientists the world over are wondering just how old this mummy can be. After examination in the US, the Americans determined that it was about 3,000 years old. They then sent it off to Tokyo. Japanese scientists look at it with their more precise methods, and they say it's 2,953 years old. They then sent it to the USSR for examination. The Soviets announced the mummy is 2,953 years, five months, two weeks, and four days old. Journalists said, how'd you find this out? Soviets replied, it confessed under Soviet interrogation. <laughs> Brezhnev is vacationing at his Crimean dacha. He wakes up, goes to the balcony, and greets the sun. Says, good morning, beautiful sun. What a beautiful day it is going to be. And the son replies, Good morning, revered first secretary of our beloved party. And around noon, he exits his office, goes out to his garden, looks up in the noonday sun, and says, Good afternoon, dear son. And the son says, Good afternoon, courageous hero of the anti-fascist war and beloved first citizen of our glorious homeland. Brezhnev finishes his work for the day, goes back to the balcony to greet the sunset. He says, good evening, setting sun. Go to hell, dirtbag, I made it to the west. <laughs> <laughs> Got to make sure we use that one on <laughs> later on. At family day, we allow our families to come in and get a feeling for where mommy and daddy works. There's all this cool spy stuff. You can get to see where their office is, stuff like that. So a friend of mine brings her, his eight-year-old son and seven-year-old daughter to walk around. And they come around and see exhibits like this. And the son looks up at his dad and says, Dad, this is so cool. Uh, did you ever use any of this stuff? And he gives out the old line, well, son, you know, if I told you, I'd have to shoot you. And the kid says, tell my sister. <laughs> we often have to write what are called PARs, uh, performance evaluations of each other. And some of the reading of it is just wonderful. If you're trying to elliptically get around that someone isn't terribly good, uh, one of them said, got into the gene pool while the lifeguard wasn't watching. <laughs> Has a room temperature IQ. Has a photographic memory, but the lens cover was glued on. <laughs> Is as bright as Alaska in December. Donated his brain to science before he was done using it. He's so dense, light, light bends around him. <laughs> you know, you gotta get these things fitted. You can't just get it off the internet. 
A lot of DCIs as well like to tell stories on each other. My favorite was told by DCI Deutsch about how George Tenet was absolutely the best deputy that anyone could ever have. At one point, Deutsch is having this meeting with major foreign officials in the director's office. Tenet walks in, looks around very seriously at everyone, and looks at Deutsch and says, Sir, uh, there's something very important that I have to discuss with you. I'm sorry, we'll have to clear the room. So all these heads of state clear out of the room. He walks up to Deutsch and he says, Sir, your fly's open. <laughs> Got to be careful of stuff like that. How many of you have seen the film The Recruit? A few of you? There's a scene in it in which Al Pacino is talking to the rookies. And oddly enough, it was based upon a presentation that I'd usually make to the rookies in CI 101. You have no idea how embarrassing it is, by the way, to see someone do a better version of you than you do. <laughs> but let me give you the speech that I used to give the rookies to wrap us up with. You start off by asking them, you know, why are you here? Why did you join CIA, the second greatest intelligence service in the world? Is it the money? Is it the fame? Is it the opportunity for sex? Well, let me tell you what it's really about here. You know, if you're here for the money, that's not going to work. We don't drive Aston Martins, although I've got a really cool Honda that I want to show you guys later. <laughs> but you know, you go into a Porsche dealership and you show your CIA card, and they're going to just throw you out because they know you don't make a lot of money. So it's not for that. And it's not for the glory. We routinely save the world each day before breakfast. And if you're going to do that, we're going to bring you back and we're going to give you a little ceremony like this in a room about like this. And we're going to show you your medal and we're going to put it back in a little file drawer because you're not allowed to actually show that to anyone because you're undercover. So it's not for that. And it's certainly not for the sex. You can't walk into a singles bar and say, so, Crystal is the name, right? And flight attendant? Me? Well, the name's Willoughby. <laughs> I am Quentin Willoughby. I'm COS Moscow. Hey, where are you going? So, it's not for that. So, why is it that you are here? Well, walk with me for a moment. You walk into the front entrance of the building, and you walk across this big agency seal, and you go through the badge machine, you walk up the steps, and you cut left. And you go past all of our artwork, and as you take a left again, you're going to come to this large mural that a bunch of kids from the sixth grade in the Bronx have painted from uh, maybe some of you went there, uh, PS-123. They painted this thing on 9-12, right after 9-11. And they have little squares on it that show airplanes hitting. The kids will write, CIA, please save us. That is why you are here. God bless America. God bless you all for coming. Let's go sign some books. Thank you. Come on over. <laughs>